My friends, I bring horrific news to you. I'm very sorry to tell you this, but Bob Lee Kerman, a brave, brave astronaut, a hero of our generation, who is currently aboard the space station in LKO, the one that we built with space shuttles a few videos ago. Um, I've just heard word from the station that he has contracted, he has contracted Ebola. So this is course, <laughs> this necessitates a very urgent mission to be scrambled together to get him back to the surface of Kerbin where he can receive adequate treatment. So that's what today's mission is going to be. So here you can see me constructing the craft that we need. You'd think I would have used a craft we already had built so we could, you know, get a nice speedy launch on the way, but you know, I've time-lapsed the footage so the construction takes a lot less. So, so it shouldn't take too long and uh, I've gone for I've gone for a strata launch system for no reason other than the fact I kind of felt like making a strata launcher. I was kind of looking through my my back catalog of videos looking at ones that people enjoyed and trying to find some inspiration for what to do this week because the original plan was to do kind of another installment of the Minima Space Hotel and Casino Dino series, but you know, I feel like I don't want to. I don't want to overwhelm you with Minmus videos every week. So um, uh, that that series is getting close to its end, to be honest. Anyway, but thought let's take a break from Minmus and uh, and SSTOs and all that, and do something else. And um, I just thought let's do a strata launch video because people liked my strata launch video I did back in 2017. I think it was 2017 or 2016. A while ago, anyway. Um, and that was kind of like a soft recreation. Of the uh, of Jeff is it Jeff Bezos, the strat basically the Strata Launch Systems Company, Strata Launcher. This is more akin to a uh, Virgin Galactic spaceship too. It's a much smaller scaled one, and uh, yeah, it's a much smaller scaled one really. So it's a two stage launch to orbit. For those unaware of a Strata Launcher, which you can see me launching here, um, not the KSP wheels, still a little bit uh, weird when it comes to launching. That kind of uh, steers back and forth and swerves a bit on the runway, but luckily this thing has massive wings so we can it can lift off at fairly low speeds. So there we go. Not even halfway down the runway before we can start tipping ourselves upwards and launching ourselves into the sky. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, for those unaware, this is an air launch system and it is a concept that exists in real life, as I said. This is very akin, akin to Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 and, of course, a smaller version of uh, Strata Launch Systems aircraft. A air launch vehicle, basically, as you can see, is just an aeroplane that flies up to a high altitude and then launches a rocket from there, thus the rocket doesn't have to get through the thick parts of the lower atmosphere. It can launch from a much higher altitude where the air is much thinner. The air resistance is therefore a lot lower and it requires a much smaller booster to get into orbit. Uh, and it's one of the more favoured options for getting cheaper uh, cheaper thing, uh, getting getting satellites into orbit cheaper. Uh, I didn't really know how I was... I kind of di I didn't do a very good job sp uh, speaking about that sentence just then, but I, I think you got the gist. <laughs> um, so obviously... Right now, there are kind of a few. There are a few competing ways of getting things into orbit uh, cheaply. The first being uh, the Skylon SSTO being the most far off and probably will never happen. Uh, that's just a single stage to orbit, and the, uh, the the engines for that space plane are what the Rapiers in KSP are based on. Then you've got the Strata Launch of it Systems, which is a massive aircraft. In fact, it's the biggest in the world by wingspan that's due to do its first flight next year, I believe, is scheduled to 2019. And then, of course, you have the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy and eventually the BFR from SpaceX. Uh, I'll talk about those in just a second, but here we are. You can see me ascending. This thing it can probably get to 10 kilometers, but it comes very slow and unwieldy at about 75 kilometers. So at that point, at this point, I just detached... <laughs> I, un I decoupled the uh, the spacecraft from the strata launch system using the action group and then fired up that vector engine. I initially used an aero spike, but the problem with the aero spike is that it doesn't have any gimbal, so we ended up having a lot, we ended up just flying forward and we didn't really pitch up very much, so it ended up being a lot less efficient than if we just used the vector, which can use its gimbal to quickly kick ourselves upwards so we can start creating more vertical velocity. And therein lies one of the issues with strata launch systems. Like Elon Musk, in fact, who for those who don't know who Elon Musk is, is the man behind SpaceX who make the uh, the Falcon 9. He's been very critical about air launch systems, saying that it's not really, you know, the, the efficiency gains you get are not really worth the added complexity and the other limitations, such as, you know, the payload size is limited to the size of the aircraft and the lateral forces created by the aircraft can cause damage to the payload as well. Um, he estimates that, you know, you only get a 5% improvement in payload to orbit with a strata launch system. And then 
you have this humongous plane to deal with, which is essentially like having a stage. So from his point of view, uh, it's just make it makes more sense to just simply increase the size of the first stage by about five percent. You know, that's that's all we're talking about here. And um, he then argues, you know, once you want a certain scale, you just can't make the plane big enough. <laughs> and when you drop the rocket, you have that problem of you're not going in the right direction. You're going horizontal, not you know up. <laughs> um, with the Pegasus launch system, that's kind of the most popular launch system and the one that Strata Launcher is probably going to use, that's what they intend to use for now at least, uh, they've got to have this big delta wing on top of the payload as well to do the turn manoeuvre, but then you've got this big delta wing on the payload which adds a bunch of mass and you know, you've got to, it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to convert your horizontal velocity into vertical velocity, or, you know, mostly vertical velocity. So, overall, he doesn't think the net gain is that great. So, it remains to be seen how well the Strata launch system can compete with the Falcon 9 and whatever successes come from that. And, obviously, you've got Blue Origin on the horizon as well. So, it's all looking exciting times ahead. Either way, it's pretty cool to see a nice variety of spacecraft, I think. So, you know, we've got... We've got that going for us just as from a spectator's point of view. It's quite nice to see these companies hashing it out, trying to come up with the with the coolest rocket. Well, you know, the, the most practical. But, you know, from my point of view, it's <laughs> it's pretty cool. Now, before I launched the, uh, the payload from the aircraft, I made a little quick save so I could reload it and uh, showcase the, the aircraft flying back to the runway. I don't have any kind of recovery mods installed or anything so this would this is impossible to do in stock like you either lose the payload or you lose the launcher in this setup hence why this is just being controlled by a probe it doesn't have any crew on it so um i kind of had to do this kind of reload a quick reload a quick save and then just show it flying in order to prove that it can do this and i thought i'd be trying to make it really cool and do what other youtubers do and land on the helipad on the vab but i i overshot it a little bit and uh, I ended up, so I thought, let's try and aim for the other helipad, uh, but then I undershot it. But you know, it doesn't matter because, like I say, we had to end up, we ended up losing the launcher anyway because of the fact I don't have a. Uh, stage recovery mod and we can't switch to between vessels when they're in the atmosphere so unfortunately that launcher was lost it's this is this is not really a practical showcase of the craft it's just showing off the design i guess so now we're in space we can deactivate the vector engine and use our orbital maneuver engines just because i thought it would look it would it would, look, it, would look, it would look cooler if we had separate engines for doing orbital maneuvers though they ended up coming a little bit short on fuel towards the end so we had to do our de deceleration burns with the uh, RCS thrusters. So, uh, as you can see, I forgot to uh, time our launch that we'd be getting a sensible <laughs> uh, encounter with the space station. We're actually miles ahead of it, so I'm putting ourselves into this kind of uh, high orbit in order to allow the space station to catch up with us because the lower your orbit, the faster you move, and the higher your orbit, the slower you move. So we're putting ourselves on a slower orbit to the space station so that when we swoop back down, will be encountering it. I could have left it as it is and just let us orbit a bunch of times and the space station would gradually have caught up to us. But remember, we're on a mission against time here. Bobby Kerman, his his Ebola is 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 taking over. So we need to get there fast. You know, he can only stay in quarantine for so long. So the stock maneuver node maker is not the best. It was hard I couldn't really get an encounter better than one kilometer separation distance and I I actually overshot the burn point a little bit as well, so we ended up not very close to the station at all. But, you know, we could rectify this by just pointing ourselves towards our target, throttling up the engines, and eventually just forcing those intersect nodes to come together. There are more efficient ways of docking and rendezvous and all that, but again, remember, we're on a time limit here. We have to get there as fast as we can. So this this was the best approach. So here you can see those the separation rapidly falling as we accelerate towards the target. Of course, you know, the keyword there is accelerating, so we're going to have to start burning retrograde relative to our target's velocity as we approach. So I'm, I kind of just eyeballed it at this point. I'm like, that looks fairly close about sort of there. <laughs> so then we just started throttling up again, slowing ourselves down. Could get a little bit closer still, so we'll point towards the target again and continue this cycle of burn towards the target for a bit, then burn retrograde to stop relative to the target, and then repeat as needed until you're there. So there we go, forcing those encounter nodes again. Now I did have a small problem here, and I checked, and I'm not the only one who has this glitch, and it's starting to really, starting to really grind my gears, you know, and I mean that sincerely, I, it's, it's getting annoying now. Um, docking, um, docking ports just seem to have broken in, uh, probably, it feels like it was KSP 1.4 or 1.3 or something, where unless you're like completely dead on, like to the absolute micrometer, 
the docking ports will just ricochet away from each other and you know throw the ships apart from each other uh, used to didn't used to this didn't used to happen right they have little magnets on board and once you got close the magnets would kind of you know attract each other and you dock fairly easily but now they just unless you're like if you're off by the tiniest fraction you'll just get thrown off into space and that's that's what kept happening here. I tried for a good half an hour, it feels like. Um, ooh, nearly hit. <laughs> so it felt like for a good half an hour. I said, you know what? I don't need this in my life. I don't need this stress, you know? I'm I'm just going to not dock. But here you can see an attempt here. I thought I'd just show at least one docking attempt to show you what I'm talking about if you're unfamiliar with this glitch. By the way, there was a slight design problem with this craft. I forgot to add uh, the necessary RCS thrusters to do side-to-side -side movement. You can see we've only got four... They do up, down, forwards, and backwards, but not side to side. I did actually. I feel like I do. I feel like I remember putting uh, RCS thrusters on the t on the central tanks. I guess I must have forgot to save the craft before I reloaded it to film this video. Whoops! But uh, whatever, doesn't matter. So there you can see the docking ports there. Not great alignment there, I'll admit. But we are going to come a little bit closer. So you can see they're basically scraping against each other at this point. So all we had to do now was throttle towards it, and you can see, and it just fired us off. So, uh, in fact, I, I feel like I did get closer. There were there were more attempts where I got even closer, and it just kept on doing the same thing. I don't know if it's because of the size of this craft. It's quite big, and the junior jockey ports are quite small. I don't know what it was. Anyway, we're here, so I thought we'd just EVA. So, uh, squad, I hope you're watching this because, you know, you've, you've put Bobbly Kerman in great danger because now he has to go on an EVA, thus leaving his quarantine pod to go through the rest of the space station to get to the airlock, so... I hope you're happy. I mean, he would have had to do that anyway, right, to get to the docking port. But whatever, doesn't matter. So our Doctor Mantis is on board there. He's uh, he's he's held. <laughs> he's, he's thrown our our sick Kerbal out at great speed. And again, he's got to go through the uh, space plane's cockpit rather than uh, a hatch anywhere else because there are no hatches anywhere else. Because, as like I said, the plan was to dock this thing to the station so he could transfer into the cabin directly through the docking port rather than needing to go on out and use a hatch. And because that, because <laughs> the cockpit's only got one seat, I can actually do this this sort of juggling act where we kind of take Kerbals in and out and move them around so that we can get them all on board. So uh, we'll get Dr. Mantis out as well, uh, who's in a different part of the space station now, and uh, get him back on the plane, and he can just tend to his patient and keep him in good health as we prepare to descend to the Kerbal Space Center. So the, uh, the more astute observers among you may have noticed that we don't have very much liquid fuel here at all, barely... Five units was that? I, I, I didn't even see properly. Uh, or whatever. We'll talk about. You'll see it soon enough. So now that we've kind of not docked now, I guess. But the plan was to dock. But now, now that we're leaving, we can extend the solar panels on this space station again. I usually retract those panels whenever I'm doing a docking mission because, you know, I sometimes slip and end up crashing into the panels. But you know, wasn't. I guess it wouldn't have been a problem on this occasion. But there we are. Our Kerbal is pretty much rescued. Wait a second. I totally should have made this a Blunderbirds episode, shouldn't I, if I'm doing a rescue? Hang on, let's just do that. On a lonely planet, slowly spinning its way to damnation, amid the incompetence and unpreparedness of lesser- No, actually, it's probably too late, isn't it? I mean, what are we now? 13 minutes, just over 13 minutes into the video, it's probably too late for an intro at this point. Whatever. Uh, hindsight is 2020, as they say. Or, as they as they don't say, because I live in a country which doesn't use the imperial system. Where, so we say 6-6, six, because six, that's the metric system. Fun little eye fact for you there. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, just deorbited with the monopropellant, just putting our trajectory slightly ahead of where the Kerbal Space Center is, because, you know, we'll be slowing down even further due to the air resistance. We can deploy the air brakes there. This thing does have a bit of a tail-happy tendency on flying. It can stall fairly easily, though it didn't on this occasion. I'm just keeping an eye on that front command pod, because the Mark I command pod, as in the one I'm using here, not the fighter jet style one, doesn't have the best heat tolerance. So if anything's going to blow up on this craft it'll be that but as you can see we're fine you know barely barely got into the red so there's the little peninsula on which the Kerbal Space Center sits so we could just well, I guess we can just aim for that really so that's d tell me what you thought of this mission did you like it do you want to see more kind of air launch system videos because you know that could always do the Pegasus launch or even do another exploration of strata launch systems uh, aircraft because mine wasn't really a very accurate recreation of it. It was just basically a big strata launch craft So maybe I could do more strata launches if you guys enjoyed if you didn't enjoy it 
well, I won't, and I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, I did. hope you hope you enjoyed the video. And um, obviously, as as I as I always say, uh, Twitter is in the description. I'm trying to push Twitter. You know, I'm, I'm getting all the KSB memes on the go, playing the Twitter game, and of course, there's the Discord server as well. And you know, if you want to throw all your money away, then there is Patreon as well. And there's the runway there. So, you know. Not much more to talk about here. I can use the fast physics warp, which was very handy when it came to doing our deorbit burn with monopellant because monopellant has a very, very low thrust weight ratio. So just putting ourselves on like 50 times warp made it much more uh, made it much more bearable. So yeah, we actually had quite a we actually budgeted fuel quite well, didn't we? Well, we didn't because we had to use monopellant to uh, to deorbit. But in terms of fuel left over, not very much. So. We did quite well, and we've got this kind of stanced position here where the craft is leaning forwards, much like how the NASA's, much how NASA's space shuttle sits on its wheels, because we don't need it to take off on its own, it would take off from a glider, so having this kind of nose down position is far more stable for landing. That's just that. And there's those on screen, links to things. And I already talked about what they are, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn the microphone off now. I hope you enjoyed the video, as I said earlier, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.